Hey, Sean here from speedcubeview.com. I made the shape mod that I've been wanting to do for years. A few years back, I made my first ever one, which was this half truncated cube. And I believe this was out of a Guanlong. And there's a lot of flaws in it that I wanted to adjust, but a lot of people have convinced me to just leave this one be and make a new one later on. But what I wanted to make was this. This is the hexagonal bipyramid, or also called the hexagonal dipyramid. Both are correct. And I will do a top-down view to do a full solve in just a little bit. But this is out of a Shengshou legend. So I'm going to walk you through exactly what I did to make it, some mistakes I made. And this is not too difficult to make. I mean, I basically made it without any power tools either. I started with the power tool, didn't really like it, and then switched because I didn't have the nicer ones. So first thing that I should have done that I didn't do is glue the parts of the pieces together. So the legend has caps on each piece. And I wish I glued those on before I started because as I started cutting, they fell off and then it was harder to put back on when they're really tiny pieces. And also I lost one, so I had to use a part of another puzzle to make that work. I started by taping up the puzzle and drawing in where I am going to cut. That way, one, the tape held the puzzle together and that just helped me know exactly where to cut without just eyeballing it because I've never done this mod before. Now I did already have one that was factory made. However, it doesn't perform great and the sticker is not really a big fan of the stickers. So I wanted to make my own and actually this one can corner cut because it's the sale. Um, if I loosen the tensions even more, like it could probably get up to 45 degree corner cutting. So yeah, so I taped the pieces, uh, marked up where I'm going to cut. So I started to try and cut with a Dremel first. Didn't really work so well. So then I just used a hobby saw. I had one a while ago and then I don't know where it went. So I had to order that. Some of these orders, you know, they're more expensive than if you bought the puzzle new, but you can use a lot of the stuff moving forward. So I used the hobby saw to cut and it actually worked best. I'm going to keep doing it that way. Uh, the Dremel seemed to sometimes melt plastic and I, don't know, I just didn't, didn't have the control I wanted to with it. After it was cut, then the next step was filling in the pieces and I used epoxy sculpt. Now before I added the sculpt, I, I filled some pieces with foam, styrofoam, just to fill the space and not use as much epoxy sculpt. I don't know if I'm going to do that next time. I might do it, but use much less because I used too much foam and when I started fi like sanding it down, I ran into where the foam was, so I had to fill it again a second time. At that point, it was just a lot of sanding and refilling. There were some pieces like the corners that ended up getting really thin. I had to fill them a lot more. One completely broke, so I had to fix that one. But after three times of filling and re-sanding to shape it, I got to a point that I really liked. Now, it's not completely perfect. So if you notice, some of the edges are not the exact same shape as other ones when they're supposed to be. And instead of constantly mixing it and getting a perfect size or shape to it, I just left it as it is and got just sort of eyeballed it, which means I did not ever want to take it apart to clean pieces up. So I just kept it together the whole time for this. After a lot of the sanding and I got it to a good spot, that's when I spray painted it, did a clear coat and a couple times also polished that. So I did a couple, um, so I did a couple layers of that. Then we got to the stickering. And for the sides that had the center, which this would, which this is why the mod is actually not too difficult because you have the centers that are just the exact same. You don't need to fill the center pieces or adjust those. For those sides, I just use pre-cut um, shades and then I trim those off because I have a lot of extras. For the other ones, I bought some vinyl and I'll put links to everything below for Amazon. So the epoxy sculpt, the uh, hobby saw, the vinyl, and I cut the stickers from there. I just sort of, again, eyeballed that, you know, it. Some of them could be a lot better and more accurately cut, but it's close enough for me since the puzzle isn't perfect anyways. It's just nice to sort of see those little flaws to know that, okay, this is a handmade puzzle. Initially, I was going to go for the same colors on the top and bottom, but slightly darker shades or slightly brighter shades, but the vinyl didn't have the really fluorescent shades I wanted, so I kind of switched it up, added some purple and pink in there. And yeah, that is the mod. It turned out really good. Like I'm super happy with it. A um, couple of the stickers are a little more curved than I would have liked, but yeah, I'm going to do a full solve now so you can see how it looks scrambled and solved. 
but this is a mod that I've always wanted to do. I have an idea for the next mod that I want to do and I've already glued the pieces together or the you know the parts of each piece that way when I start sanding it it's going to be much nicer but again it's going to be a mod where I don't adjust the center so it's just sort of trimming it down and filling it. None of the pieces are built out. I think one thing I really like about this is it looks larger than a 3x3 three three just because it's corner to corner this way. I mean, if I tilt it to the side, you can sort of see how it's the same, but it actually looks a little bit larger by the time it's done. So if you want to do this mod, definitely check it out. It's an easy one to do. The first one I ever did was a half truncated cube, which might be a little bit easier, um, but definitely a fun one to do. And, and it's nice to just have a puzzle that you built and you shaped and designed. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Hit like, subscribe, more content like this in the future. And as always, stop by speedcubeview.com for news and reviews. Okay, so I'm going to show you a couple more things up close. You can see the stickers are not perfect by any means. The cutting wasn't perfect, so I'm not that worried about it. You know, I wish I was more accurate with those cuts. But from far away, it looks okay. Or at least I think so. My favorite thing about this mod is that two of the corners have six colors on them so you get this sort of red orange yellow green blue here and you can just see all of them in one corner i was thinking about doing blue and green opposite and red and orange opposite but i wanted their whole rainbow spectrum this side was going to do more fluorescent colors so you can see the lighter yellow lighter blue the lighter red but i didn't have a fluorescent orange um, in that pack of vinyl that i got and so i used pink and then purple instead of let's say gray or something else but that way i have the red and purple here so first, let's do a checkerboard pattern, just so you can see what that looks like on this mod. I threw it up on Instagram. I've been kind of posting all these things on Instagram, so if you're not subscribed there, check that out. And what I really like about this, then, you can see these corners sticking out. The, the checkerboard pattern looks really cool. We're going to keep mixing this up and do a full solve. So this one isn't too crazy because the centers are not modified. Same thing with the other mod that I did, the half truncated cube, the centers basically stay the same. So you don't have it as like a super cube and it's not too difficult to line up. You just have pieces that are, have a little extra colors on them. So I apologize if you hear a lawnmower in the background. I can't muffle it out too much, but I'm going to do my best by keeping the microphone close to me. Okay, so let's do a saw first. So let's do it. So let's do it. Oh my god. <laughs> so let's do a full solve and I always just like lining up the white pieces with the centers. So we've got that one right there. Um, this one has to be lined up with green so we can do. Oh, I see. That edge is flipped, so let's uh, take care of that. There it is. Now I can do that. Oh, it probably would have been easier just putting the corner in on its own. Okay, so this one needs to go here. And we've got the blue and green edge that's back here. Purple and white, and that needs to line up with the this edge. So there's another thing that I, I could have sanded that off a little bit, but I kind of like, you know, the more sharper edges and eh, that one I could have cleaned up. Now I'm noticing some of these mistakes, but oh well. <laughs> it's already, I'm saying it's finished. And there we go, and it's solved. So, fun puzzle. I'll definitely bring this around whenever competitions start up again. I'm happy with the way it turned out without using any power tools or anything. Um, I think a belt sander would make it a lot easier to sand these pieces down. And having like a, a vinyl cutter or maybe just going slower with an X-Acto knife be a little bit better. But I'm happy with the way this is. I've got this one. I already have another puzzle. Where'd it go? This one's already set up to 
be cut. I've glued the pieces together so that way they're not going to fall apart when I start to cut this. So thank you very much for watching. Leave your thoughts and questions in the comment section below. Hit like and subscribe for more content like this in the future. And as always, stop by speedcubeview.com for more news and reviews.